let's let's continue with that. Let's think about some of your favorite tasks to teach. Could you describe one of your favorite tasks and why it engages students in statistical thinking? Yeah, so my, my current favorite task is uh, called Smelling Parkinson's Disease. Okay. And it's based on a news story I saw about a year ago by, um, actually, I think I saw it first on the BBC. Mm -hmm. And it's about Joy Milne, a woman in, in the UK who claims to be able to smell Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And so they designed uh, an investigation, or uh, rather a task for her, mm -hmm. to, to investigate whether or not she really could smell Parkinson's. And they gave her 12 shirts, six of which were worn by, by um, Parkinson's patients and six of which were not. Uh, they were worn by some other non-Parkinson's patient. Yes. And they shuffled them up and they said, okay, you tell us who's who. And she, she got 11 of 12 right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the 12th person, and this is what I think makes it great for students, the one that she was wrong on, she said that they had Parkinson's. And the experimenters said, well, no, no, they don't. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, they do. And she wouldn't back down. And a couple months after the, the um, experiment. experiment was run, the person who she said had Parkinson's, but, but they didn't think that that person did, they called the experimenters back uh -huh. and said, by the way, you should know I was just diagnosed with Parkinson's. Wow. <laughs> so she was really 12 out of 12. And, yeah, it, yeah. and you save that twist for the end in the lesson, and right. students do the same thing. Yeah. And speaking of relevance, I've had students in the room whose parents have diagnosed with Parkinson's, and, and we do that activity and that investigation, and it's just a hit every right, time. Right, right. So from the student's perspective, what are they trying to investigate about that experiment? So the statistical content is simply just inferential thinking. Uh -huh. It's a test of significance on day one of the course. I do it the first day. Ah, day and one. <laughs> day one. Uh, and at most it requires that you know a little bit about fractions. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to calculate uh, a proportion. Yeah. And so on day one, we start with inferential thinking. And, and it's an informal test of significance. Yeah. But it's, it's, that's the point, the statistical point of the, the right. lesson. Right, trying to, trying to think about, is that event unusual enough? Sure. You know, and should we think that it's unusual enough? Yeah, can we plausibly rule out chance right. as an explanation for what she did? Yeah. Guessing, you yeah. know, in, in that case. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great, great. What about you? And I actually used the smelling Parkinson's early this year. It wasn't day one because I didn't have it at that time. <laughs> and it was a big hit with my students. Uh -huh. um, we got into talking about um, you know, how, you know, how many out of 12, if you were just guessing, how mm -hmm. many of 12 do you think someone would be able to guess right, right. if it was just a 50-50 chance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have that, that ability that Joy has to smell the Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. um, so that one, that was a good one. And any, any um, I think, activity where there's a simulation that we can do right. and then actually say, okay, instead of having you, know, you pull these cards and guess at random, you know, just once or twice, you know, let's do it 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. And we've got technology that can do that. Mm -hmm. So throughout the year, there are a number of um, activities that are kind of like that, you know, hiring discrimination activity. Um, one of the ones that I did earlier this year was um, having the students take samples of M&Ms and in their little sample calculate the proportion of blue M&Ms. Mm -hmm. And you know, got to see this idea of sampling variability from sample to sample to sample. They're all yeah. getting yeah. Like, different results. And then I say, okay, now the company claims that the proportion of blue is 0.24. Mm -hmm. you know, what do you think? And the students this year really got into a heated debate over maybe we got a weird sample versus maybe the company's not telling the truth. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. that's you know, the inferential thinking that I think is so right. important to have. Right. And and it's really good that our students care about a company making appropriate claims. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. right. You know. Yeah. Well, and so what I what I I like the fact that you were talking about um, something you do on day 1 and mm -hmm. then you were talking about bringing different tasks in throughout the year. I have a similar task that I use the Paul the octopus mm -hmm. um, where he was able to guess the winners of the World Cup eight out of eight times. So they put Paul oh, the like octopus that. in the in a tank of water and they have the flags of the countries that are playing in the in the World Cup soccer games. And um, Paul lives in Germany. <laughs> oh, Paul's not with us anymore, but Paul did live in Germany, this famous octopus. And he would swim, they would put food in both, um, um, both vessels um, that had the flags on it and he would swim. And his predict they said his prediction was, where did he go to eat his food? 
Right. And he got eight out of eight right. predictions correct of who was going to win. So the big thing was, oh, well, so does Paul the octopus really know something? Right. <laughs> you know, how likely, <laughs> right. you know, is that? And, um, you know, because it's related to sports and it's a fun right. kind of comment, right. you know, um, context, um, the students also really get into it. You right. Know? So, but, so, you know, and I tend to do that one kind of early on, particularly when I'm working with teachers. So what's one of your favorite all-time tasks I'm that glad you use with teachers? <laughs> um, a case of possible discrimination. Okay. Um, Chris Franklin and Gary Kayer yeah. um, wrote this. Um, I, I'm not, I think they rewrote it, to be honest with you, uh -huh. out of something from an NCTM publication. Yeah. Um, but it has all of these features. It also has the feature that it's about discrimination. Now, it's about discrimination out of the 60s where mm -hmm. bank tellers are promoting people, maybe there's a gender bias. Right. So it's not so incendiary that students are going to jump up in arms, but they do understand discrimination right. and they can jump on one side or the other. That's right. That's and right. So, so, they they, so there's, there's an equality in and a social justice kind of Absolutely. You know, point to this task as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And uh, it asks them to make some predictions. It mm -hmm. asks them to formulate a question and then it help, gives them a way to do that. Right. Then they have a way through a simulation to gather some data. Um, eventually, um, they in their analysis, they come up, they do a dot plot and they come up with a p-value, although they don't have to know what a p-value is. Right, right. And then they can even use a confidence interval, although they don't have to use the, those terms. Right, right. right. They, it's, they, it's they're intuitive. Absolutely. And and we give them some guidance about, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a typical situation, we would be looking at something being outside the realm of 5% of the time, lower than 5% of the time in occurrence. But it gives them this idea, it's very solid in this idea, could this um, situation happen the, the outcome happen but just by random chance. Is that in the realm of possibilities right. or is this unusual? Yeah. Um, it, so the, it's very scalable yeah. um, in that I could even use a binomial with it. Um, there uh, p-value, right. right. confidence interval, but I don't have, have to, to use any of those. Then when you gather data from, uh, you obviously gather data from partner pairs uh, and then you gather it as a class. Mm -hmm. Now you have even more data by which to gather and uh, make an inference. And then you gather classes of data. Right. And um, Chris, bless her heart, has been gathering <laughs> years of classes of data. <laughs> and it's remarkable how close that is when you use the binomial to figure out the real p-value. Right. And, um, right. and then students are asked to draw a conclusion. So they've been asked to, make, to buy in, they've been asked to make a prediction, they now are using a scientific method yeah. to study, and then they're going to come back to their conclusion and, and view that against their prediction. Yeah. And hopefully be more aware statistically as a citizen mm -hmm. of how they might use this process in other ways. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that you just mentioned scientific method mm -hmm. because I think that that's one of the really nice parallels that we can draw that, you know, the four phases of a statistical investigation mm -hmm. is very parallel and similar Absolutely. to the scientific method that they're also learning in their science classes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, going towards this um, database decision making as an informed citizen that yes. Lots of our classes can be helping mm -hmm. our students build these skills and ways of reasoning with this. Absolutely. And, and it, it means that anybody can reason right. like this. Right. That we don't have to make rash special. decisions. Yeah. We really can um, uh, deal with this ourselves. Yeah. We often use um, the setting of let's convince a jury. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we can't convince them with real statistic -y, mathematical things. We have to be able to bring that back down to an understandable, restatable method. Yeah. Um, when I'm working with teachers, that's often our stumbling block, um, is how do I actually then state this in terms that anybody mm. can make sense? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. got to communicate your results. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm.